Oh my god, what is going on in here? Uh, uh, nothing? I thought we talked about this. We said we wouldn't use other people's LUTs anymore. Oh, you mean the... <laughs> These aren't the regular LUTs. These are conversion LUTs. Watch this. Oh, okay. That looks, that looks way better. Yeah, so in our case, this LUT takes the Canon log footage that we've shot and converts it to the proper color space for YouTube. Okay, I will say that that all sounds a little bit complicated, but it looks way better than those other LUTs that we were using. Absolutely. But can we still color grade? Them? Oh yeah, just give me one second. So here's one I did manually. Here's one I found online and here's a teal and orange. Okay, fully, fully sold, but just, can you show me how to do it? Sure, let's get started. Why is it that you might not want to use just any old LUT that you find on the internet or maybe one that you've purchased from somebody else? Well, there are two different types of LUTs, technical LUTs and creative LUTs. And if you confuse these two types, it can be really hard to get the types of colors you want in your image. If you think of LUTs as paint samples from a paint store, like these little chips I've got here, this is from a bear store. Now, if I take this and try to go to a Benjamin Moore store and say, I want this color, they may not be able to give me this exact color. And so technical LUTs are kind of like these samples that you see. They're designed for a specific paint store to get a specific color of paint. Whether you shoot with a Canon camera or a Sony camera, you need to use the right technical LUT to correct or color correct your image. There are a few things that happen when you color correct your image. One, you're typically converting it from a log profile to a linear profile, but you're also converting the color space. I shoot with a Canon, so the color space options that I have available to me are Rec 709, Rec 2020, and Cinema Gamut. If you're shooting Sony, you have similar options. There are a few more in there, but you also have S Cinetone, which is the really popular one that's kind of comparable to Canon Cinema Gamut. These color spaces or these color modes, if you're shooting on a Sony, are kind of like walking into the different paint stores. You need to go to the right paint store to get the type of paint you want. Within the paint store or within the specific camera brand that you shoot with, you also have different types of paint. Whether you shoot with the the more eco-friendly paints or the outdoor paints or kind of the general purpose paints, that's kind of like the different log profiles that you have available. For Canon, you have C-Log, C-Log 2, and C-Log 3. Those are different curves or gamma curves. You also have a linear curve, which is how the overall picture appears. Typically when we're shooting and we intend to do color correcting and color grading later, we want to have as flat of a look or as logarithmic of a color profile within our image as we can. Just to reiterate, if you go to your favorite influencer or your favorite YouTuber and buy their LUTs, if they're LUTs that are designed for a Sony camera and you shoot with Canon or vice versa, you might not be able to get the exact colors that you're expecting. Circling back to the technical versus the creative LUT, typically you wanna use the technical LUTs that are offered by your camera manufacturer. In Premiere Pro, there are two options for applying LUTs. In Lumetri, you can see that the input LUT is located here. That's gonna be my technical LUT. That's what's gonna take me from the color space that I'm shooting in, and of course, I can either be in Cinema Gamut, I can be in Rec 709, or I can be in Rec 2020, and I can come in here and you'll see I have all of these LUTs that are downloaded directly from Canon. You can see in the name here, it's what I'm converting from, then what I'm converting to. In my case, I'm going from Cinema Gamut, C-Log 3 to Rec 709, and you can see there are two options here. It's saying wide dynamic range, that's fine, but there's a 33 and a 65. Without getting too complicated, those are grid numbers, and if you ever see them, just know that the higher the number, the more information, it's kind of like the higher resolution of a conversion that it's gonna perform. There's a whole article you can read on that, but I will always use the 66 option. So again, Cinema Gamut, that's what I'm shooting in because I know that's what I set my camera to. C-Log3 to Rec 709. As soon as I do that, 
that takes my footage and converts it to how it would have looked if I was shooting straight out of my camera in a linear color profile. Now, of course, you can also come in here and still make adjustments if you want more contrast or if you wanna drop highlights, raise shadow, add saturation, but now we're getting into the color grading process. Because I'm very used to editing with curves in Lightroom, I absolutely love adding contrast back into my image with curves. For example, if I want the midtones brighter, I'll grab that midpoint of the curve and drag it up or if I want to drop my highlights I'll drag the upper portion of that curve and drag that down when we get into serious color grading sometimes you want to start changing both the hue or the saturation of different colors in your image when you look at the Lumetri within Premiere Pro that's exactly what each of these curves represent if you wanna keep a color the way it is, say in this image, I like the saturations of the green, I can click to add a point, and then it will pin that color there so it doesn't change. I can keep doing that for, let's say the red, and maybe a little bit of the blues, or if I want to start desaturating my blues, as you can see, there's a lot of blue in the highlights here. If I start to drag that down, now I'm getting rid of that, and this image starts to look way more yellow and way more green overall because I've pinned the greens and the yellows or if I wanted to add more saturation to them, I could come in here and drag that up. Now, one thing you will notice is I'm dealing with a proxy file here. With proxy files, sometimes you don't get all the data out of it. So I will typically turn that off to really see where the colors in my video footage are looking. There's a lot more data in the original file than there is in the proxy file. And so sometimes proxy files start to look bad. Just make sure you turn your proxies off while you're color grading. In the hue versus hue curve, that's where you take a color and you transform it to another color. Let's say for example, I wanted my greens to look more orange. If I was to click some points along this curve to pin those colors, but then say grab my greens and drag them up, now my greens start to look a little bit more orange. The danger with Premiere Pro, especially if you're a Lightroom user and you're used to making hue and saturation adjustments there, with Premiere Pro, you can really drag these to the extreme. Like You can almost completely change a color from one end of the color spectrum to the other. Even slight adjustments are perfect for getting where you want to go. The hue versus luma is kind of like the brightness within Lightroom. You can take each of the colors and either brighten or darken them. Say you wanted your greens to be darker and maybe your blues to be brighter. If I went in here, I'm gonna make some pins just to keep the reds where I want them. And let's say take the greens, drag them down. Now the greens are getting darker. If I was to come into the blues and drag them up, remember we had a lot of the blues in the snow there, and as I drag them up, the snow is kind of getting brighter. So far I've mentioned both Canon and Sony have their technical LUTs, but if you're shooting with a drone, DJI also has technical conversion LUTs. I'm gonna grab the technical LUT that I have installed. In this case, it's just a generic D-Log to Rec 709 conversion LUT. And if you want any of these LUTs, I'm gonna go ahead and leave as many links as I can in the description to this video. So if you are looking for the Canon LUTs or the Sony LUTs or the DJI LUTs, check the description because they're gonna be in there. I've got one more example where I'm gonna show you how to use some of Premiere Pro's built-in creative LUTs. But before that, if you're getting any value out of this, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you're someone who's never heard of technical conversion LUTs, go ahead and leave a comment. Say what type of camera you use and if you're gonna go ahead and maybe pick up the technical conversion LUTs right after this video. If you've downloaded creative LUTs from your favorite creator or maybe you wanna use some of the ones that are built into Premiere Pro, that's all located under the creative tab you'll see that it says look here and I've actually downloaded some that I paid for these Canon ones some of them are a bit warmer some of them 
flatten the highlights or raise the shadows, that's where you'll find them. And in order to install them, you'll need to drop them into the Adobe common folder. And depending on if you're on a Mac or on a PC, it's gonna be in a different location. Or if you just wanna use some of the built-in ones, Premiere Pro has these SL speed looks. They're named pretty intuitively. So if you want them to look warm, a lot of these golder ones tend to be very saturated and very warm. If you want it to look more blue, you can see there's like these blue intensity, blue steel ones. And you can go through and just click and see what look you're interested in. And once you find one that you're happy with, click on it and it applies it to your image. That is the most intuitive way I have found to both color correct and color grade your image. You certainly can use LUTs from other people. Just understand what cameras and what color profiles that they're designed for. Maybe you color grade differently. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you got any value out of this video, go ahead, hit the like or subscribe so that you stick around for the next one. That's it for me. Take care. Mm -hmm.